What is going on YouTube? Thank you for checking in to another video. Today's video, we're trying out a amp. This is White Bricks 3K amp. We're just gonna give it some real life test and see how it does. Let's get right into it. So Black Brick actually sent me this quite a while ago. I am just now getting around to it. For the owner of Black Brick, I'm so, so sorry. I did mean to get to this a lot sooner, but we're getting to it now. First off, you'll notice it comes in an awesome case. I think this is so cool. Just something different that you don't see every day. Let's get this thing open. First off, we have the specs sheet from them. This is a one ohm stable amp, subsonic adjustments, low pass filter, bass boost as you'd expect, phase adjustments, overload, short circuit, terminal, low voltage protection, easy bridging operation. At four ohms, this thing is rated at 1450 watts. At two ohms, it's rated at 2500 watts. And at one ohm, it is rated at 3000 watts. Frequency response is eight to 180 hertz. Low pass filter is 40 to 180 hertz. The bass boost frequency is 30 hertz. Bass boost level 0 to 12 dB. Signal noise ratio 70 dB. It says the best efficiency is 85%. And then of course it is bridgeable. Overheat protection 176 degrees Fahrenheit. It of course comes with a bass remote. Very nice metal case on this. Feels very nice as well. There's no uh, wobble or anything in the knob. However it is a just a 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack connection. I know some people don't like these and they'd rather see the actual telephone style connection, but still, this will get the job done. It also comes with one of these little things. I think these are the things you put on the back of your phone that it can then pop out to make it easier to hold. Just kind of a neat little extra trinket. And then they send you some uh, ear protection for when this 3K amp absolutely blows out your ears. Very, very sleek looking amp. Really definitely like just the simplisticness of it. Has a nice kind of texture. Over here, looks like we do have nice oversized zero gauge inputs. That is awesome. And then these look to be almost four gauge outputs for the speakers. And then over here, we have all of our adjustments and RCA inputs. Now these are regular style inputs. They are not the Tiffany style inputs. Personally, I do like to see the Tiffany style inputs on amps, but it is what it is. Even my tar amps back there does not have the Tiffany style RCA inputs. But of course we have our gain, low pass filter, subsonic filter, bass boost frequency, and the bass boost. Let's pop this backplate off and just kind of see what we're working with. Here are the guts. Now I'm gonna be completely honest. I do not really know anything about the internals of amps or whatnot, but I'm sure some of y'all watching this probably do. So just gonna give y'all a little show of what we do got going in here. Let me know in the comments what you think of these guts. So I have some sky high zero gauge here and it did fit in there. I did have to cut it down to kind of new wire so it would be as small as possible, but the whole thing did fit in there. So I think we can get this guy hooked up. We've got it hooked up. Let's turn this guy to the on position and just make sure everything is good. Well, there we go. She came on, no issues. Let's go ahead and hook it up to the sub. Got the sub all hooked up, and I gotta say, it is so nice having a amp that does not have a really, really noisy fan. Of course, I don't think this thing has any fan, but my tar amps just has the loudest fan that you can imagine. Super annoying. Nice to have something nice and quiet here again. This sub is wired down to 2 ohms, but we're getting a good deal of impedance rise, so it's rising up to 4 or 5 ohms. 
and on this SMD meter, we're still getting 1,000, 11, 1,200 watts, and the clipping light has not come on once yet, so I'd say it seems to be doing all right. So that was a few days ago that I put this in here, I think two days ago or so. And since then, I really just kind of wanted to play it for a few days, see how it does playing for extended periods of time. It was close to 90 the other day and I played it for a good while. Never went into protect mode or anything like that. So I'd say that's awesome. Don't really have any com uh, complaints yet. So what I think the next thing that we need to do is this sub is a dual four ohm. So I have it wired down to two ohms. So we need to get a sub that is wired lower so we can really test the capabilities of this amp out. Let's see, over here we have this Defont's Apocalypse. This is the 2.7 series. This is the uh, SA272. So this is a dual two ohm. So we could wire this guy down to one ohm. I think let's do that and just kind of see what sort of power we can get out of it. So as I said, this is a dual two ohm. As you can see there, we're sitting right at uh, 1.8, 1.7. Now we have this set to dyno mode, so this will read the max power, but it will not read it above clipping. So it's kind of like your dynamic test that you'll see um, Williston Auto Labs or one of them do. So let's go ahead and just bump a test tune through it, kind of see what it does, and then we'll go up from there. 1827 watts. We got a 139.4. Turn it up a little bit, see if we can squeeze uh, some more out of there. Okay, not bad. 2.3 ohms and we got 1,119 watts and we did break into a 140 not bad at all with a 3k amp I'd say that seems to be pretty on par with the ratings let's bump some music and see how it does Next up, we have this big old American Bass HD. Now this happens to be a dual one ohm, so we can wire this guy down to half an ohm, which will be awesome. We'll see how the amp does on a half an ohm sub. And then of course with uh, impedance rise and whatnot, it'll probably be one to 1 1.5 ohms. We'll kind of see what the amp does there and see how close we can get to that 3000 watts. Now this basket on the sub is so big, it actually doesn't quite fit in the hole, but that's okay. We're just doing some burps to it anyway. Back when I reviewed this sub like a year ago, I put over 10,000 watts through it and ended up tearing the spider a little bit, so it doesn't really sound that good playing anyway. So not really a big deal, guys. Let's see how much power we can squeeze out of this amp. Let's see what this ohms out to. There you go, 0. 0.5. That's what we want to see. Not 
too bad at all. We did not clip once there, and I even saw it get up to about 2,800 watts, and it seemed to be doing between like 1.2 to 1.7 ohms, so honestly, not too, too bad. Well, let's run a few 40 hertz test tones through it and see what we can get at the peak at in the dyno power. 40 hertz, kind of got it low, but we'll go up from there. Rose to two ohms, we got 1,200 watts. Two ohms again, we got 1,800 watts. Once again, two ohms. That time we got 2,060 watts. Almost 2,100 watts at two ohms. 2,264, just under two ohms. Also, we've got up to a 141.2, not terrible. There you go. 2334 at 1.8 ohms. And you saw that clipping light come on there, guys. But still, we got uh, 2339 watts at 1.8 ohms. Uh, we'll play some music just to get more of a kind of a dynamic test. those ohms down a little bit with that more dynamic test there not exactly sure what hertz that was at but we did get to 3613 watts at 1.1 .1 ohm again guys that is dyno power so that is bringing it up to clipping it does not read anything above clipping so on a dynamic true musical test at a little bit above one ohms we got 3600 watts which is definitely above their rating so I'd say, guys, from a realistic, real-life perspective, the RMS rating on this thing does seem to be pretty good. Turn this guy back to real-time power. Just play a little bit more music so you can kind of see how this thing performs when it's wired to half an ohm. Hanging out there in that mid to upper 2000 watt range there for a good little bit of time with no clipping whatsoever, so that is awesome. Overall, as y'all can see, the amp is done actually pretty well. Didn't really know what to expect going into this review, but it seemed to do fine. Even having a sub wired down to half an ohm, of course we get uh, impedance rise and whatnot, but still a lot of people would say don't wire your sub down to half an ohm even with the impedance rise, and a lot of amps will go into protect mode and whatnot if you do that but I had that thing wired up like that for a little while, played several songs, pushing it pretty hard, and it still seemed to do all right. All right, guys, let's kind of go over pros and cons of this amp. First off, for cons, it is a pretty big amp, just compared to all the full bridge stuff that we're starting to see now. It is almost two feet wide, but it's only about six inches deep, two inches tall, so not like a huge amp or anything, but for 3,000 watts, definitely is taking up a pretty big um, amount of space. Now that being said, I used to have an audio pipe 3K amp, and that thing was enormous, way bigger than this guy. So as far as size goes, for a 3K amp, it's not really that bad. Just after having a uh, full bridge amps that are so much smaller, definitely interesting to go back to something like this. Um, another thing is, I'm not sure how important this is, but I know a lot of amps like this, they will have the entire cover basically be a heat sink. You'll see those ribs on it, and again, that's just the whole thing being a heat sink, whereas we don't really see that here, and it is a somewhat warm up through here, as I would expect, but that, again, could be a con if you're really, really pushing this thing um, hard. Again, I don't know a whole lot about amp design, so maybe that doesn't even matter in this case, but that is just something to note. Uh, what Another thing that could be a con, it does have the 3.5 millimeter jack as opposed to the a uh, telephone jack that we see on a lot. Since it is just a 3.5 millimeter jack, uh, we don't have any lights on here. We don't have a clipping light or anything like that, like you're starting to see on some newer amps. And it does not have Tiffany connectors for the RCAs, 
Only issue with that is you'll notice the RCAs are looser and it is easier to break them or something like that. Whereas those Tiffany style connectors are really, really stout. As for the pros, you do seem to get the RMS power that they advertise. That is awesome. A 3000 watt amp, guys, is no joke. You saw how hard it was pushing uh, all the amps that I hit all the way from a sub wire to 2 ohms to 1 ohm to half an ohm. So really not bad at all. And if you do want to wire your sub to half an ohm, like I did here, at least in my case, it didn't give me any trouble and I was pushing it pretty hard. So I'm not going to go out and say this thing is half ohm stable or anything like that. But it did seem to do fine. Another pro, you do get a really, really cool carry case for this thing. But that is just kind of cool and neat. Gives a little more premium feel to the brand as a whole. Also, seemed to sound pretty good. Played the lower frequencies fine. Didn't have any issues. Didn't have any complaints as far as sound quality. So, seemed to be fine there. Overall, guys, after having a 12,000 watt amp in this car for so long, my expectations were not too high for this guy. But it actually did pleasantly surprised me it really put my subs to work sounded good got nice and loud so honestly i'm pretty happy with it if i was doing a smaller build i would definitely use this guy for your average build you really don't need something bigger than this you could get an extra battery and you would be totally set to go when you get above that like 3000 watts you really have to start dumping some big money into your system so overall I was pretty happy with it. Well, y'all, I think that is going to do it. Totally different, me doing amp reviews here. Not what I normally do. Generally, I like to leave that thing over to the pros, like uh, Derek over at Willison Audio Labs. He does an excellent job, excellent, excellent job doing the reviews and tests on these things. And it's just stuff that I can't do. I just don't have the proper dyno to do it the way he does it. But it was kind of cool doing a more real-world test on this amp if you enjoyed this kind of thing let me know maybe i'll do some more here at some point that's gonna do it guys let me know what y'all thought more stuff to come soon i've got two monster little eight inch subs that we're gonna be seeing how loud they can get here in a video really really soon so stay tuned for that that's gonna be awesome guys anyway that's gonna do it keep basing on